Hey everybody, Brewbeard is back again with two more choices for tonight. Now my theme was fall and with that I found a couple of good cider recommendations so tonight is going to be about ciders. Before we get to that I'm going to announce the name of my hedgehog. Now after a few recommendations I picked my favorite and the winner is so before we get to that, I'm going to announce the name of my hedgehog. And after a few really good recommendations online and in person, I would like to announce to the world my hedgehog, Bruce Quillis. Pause for laughter, pause for laughter, pause for laughter. Okay. And so congratulations on the lucky person who got to name my hedgehog. With that being said, Bruce, what is our first cider? First cider of the night is the Belgian Floris Apple. So the Floris Apple comes to us all the way from Miele, Belgium, and is distributed by way of Lorton, Virginia. It's 3.5 alcohol by volume and it's been described as crisp with a combination of Granny Smith and Red Delicious Apple. So without further ado, I'm going to unwrap this bad boy and take a drink. Perfect. All right. There's that. Then... You may notice I'm using a smaller glass. And that's because with apple ciders, you don't get any head. So you don't need a Pilsner, you don't need a highball glass, you don't need anything fancy. Just a little one will do. And now to go in for the taste. Okay. I mean, it's good. No, I'm trying to, I can definitely taste the tartness of the Granny Smith and the sweetness of the Red Delicious Apple. It's light, it's got more of a honey color than a regular apple cider that you can see through. And it's delicious. So I would definitely, I would definitely say this is a good buy. And now, just for a second opinion, Bruce? No? No? Are you a little sip? All right, more for me. Okay. Belgian Floris Apple. It's good. So like I said, it's 3.5 alcohol by volume. So it's a nice beer to just kick back and relax with. Um, if you don't want anything too strong, at the end of a night or the beginning of a day for some people. I would recommend this. It doesn't it doesn't taste strong. So you can almost be fooled that it's regular apple juice. Just don't let any kids have it. And now we're gonna try our second beer and he's been keeping quite a tight lip on this one. I think he knows I'm gonna like it. So Bruce, if you'll do the honors of letting me remove your head to get this beer. The second beer choice of the day is, ooh, Woodchuck Private Reserve Barrel Select. Now Woodchuck is a very popular brand and it comes to us from Middlebury, Vermont. 
people know them as a good solid apple cider beer company. So for them to have a private reserve barrel select intrigues me quite a bit. What they do different with this is they put them in bourbon barrels and age them for six months so that it gets the taste from the barrels infused in with the apple cider. And at 6.9 alcohol by volume, this is going to be just a little bit heavier than our last beer. And I'm kind of wondering if that's going to incorporate a bit of like, uh, stronger notes in the taste. So without further ado, I'm going to open this up and I'm going to have myself a taste. Now, right away, I'm noticing a little more bubbliness than in our last cider. And it's a little darker, but still transparent enough to see through. And now for the taste. It's apple cider with just that little hint of whiskey. So it's it's actually a very good infusion. And they did a very good job aging it well enough to make sure that they work together. Uh, I'm gonna go take a second taste this actually real quick. tastes more refined. I mean, it's a little, I want to say sophisticated in how it tastes, in that it's, it's less apple cider, or, yeah, it's less of a cider and more of a whiskey cider. And this is something, if they had it on tap, I'd buy it every time. It, you can feel a little more heaviness in the taste, probably because of the aging in the barrels. But all in all, I would definitely recommend this one for night out in town, uh, maybe even a bachelor party for those who don't like to drink beer or aren't really much of a whiskey expert per se. This is kind of a good middle for them, you know, because it's, it's soft enough for a sensitive palate, but it's hard enough to allow you to be free and enjoy the night. So, thank you, Woodchuck. Just like last week and like every week from now on, I am going to do a side-by-side to give my recommendations of which cider I would recommend in what situations. Now, I know I've gone into a little bit of detail with, while tasting each of these ciders, what I would recommend them for, but I'm gonna lay out a couple more scenarios in case you're wondering, should I have this now or should I have this some other time? So first scenario, you're going over to your friend's house for a Halloween party. What do you bring? Well, it depends on the friend. If you're a very close friend with them, take the woodchuck. If they're a new friend or a friend of a friend, take the florist. Why, you may ask? Well, with good friends comes good ciders. And you'll be able to let loose a little bit more with them. Whereas somebody who's a little newer, you may not want to go too crazy right away. You know, you're still trying to create that strong bond. So, whereas the florist is a little lighter and the woodchuck's a little heavier, those are my choices for Halloween parties. Now, for the next holiday, Thanksgiving. I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but some people like to plan a little bit ahead. Now, with Thanksgiving, you're going to have a lot of food, you're going to have a lot of pie, 
you're not going to want a lot of a lot of cider or a lot of beer to weigh you down. So go with the Floris because it's not going to weigh on you too much. It's not going to fill you up, and you're not going to have as many leftovers thrown on you at the end of the night. And now with Friendsgiving, it's going to be a little bit more of a restricted menu. There's not going to be as many items. So go with something a little heavier. Go with the woodchuck because you can afford a little bit more to fill you when you're hanging out with friends. You're less likely to, to watch football. You're more likely to watch like a movie or even play games. So you're going to need something that you can burn off. Last scenario for the night, bonfires. Now it's starting to get just a little colder outside and it's starting to get darker sooner. For bonfires, I am going to recommend the florist. You're going to be sitting in front of a fire telling a lot of good stories and you don't want to get too hot too fast. So with the florist and its lower alcohol content, you're not going to overheat as fast. Now, that's not to say that Woodchuck wouldn't be a great bonfire beer. I'm just trying to think of you and not sweating to death outside of the freezing cold. In closing, I would definitely recommend both of these ciders. My personal choice would be the Woodchuck because of that little hint of whiskey that it gives you. Uh, I want to thank everybody for being patient. I know I skipped a week, but there was good reason for that. I had to celebrate not one, not two, but three birthdays this week, including my own. Um, and so I'll be back with another episode uh, pretty soon. So for a nice theme for the next upcoming week, I'm going to choose sort of a Battle of the Oktoberfest. You know, one little final last hurrah for Oktoberfest. That's every beer company seems to have an Oktoberfest beer. I want you to recommend to me, what is your favorite Oktoberfest? For Bruce Quillis and Brewbeard, I will see you guys next week.